Hello, my name is Paul, and I want to show you how you can make a ring and then have it 3D printed. Now, I'm going to start with this basic shape, but really you can create whatever you want in Photoshop, even create it in Illustrator and paste it in, and then at that point you need to turn it into a 3D object. And how you do that is by opening up your 3D panel, selecting 3D Extrusion, and then clicking Create. Okay, so there's my extrusion, and I can adjust the current view, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, selecting current view, rotating this around, and you can see there's the object, okay? And what Photoshop does is it actually maintains the color of uh, the object that you've created. And quite frankly, I want to get rid of that material. So typically what I'll do is I'll select all these different materials and then remove this page icon, and that's basically a texture. In fact, if you roll over it, you can see that shape right there. But we're going to remove that texture, that color, because the color doesn't matter. The color is going to come from the 3D printer. But here's essentially my shape. All right. Now I can take a look at this ring. And this 3D object, if I go over here to my properties panel, I can check out the coordinates. So basically, I'm wondering how, how large is this? Like, how big is this going to be? You know, it, will it, is it more like a belt rather than a ring? Well, we can see the dimensions. In fact, I'm going to change this to millimeters, and I'm going to show the dimensions on the canvas. So that's Command-H or Control-H if you're on a PC, and you'll see the dimensions right down here, 635 millimeters. Well, is that too big? Is it too small for a ring? Well, that's when we need to figure out ring sizes. So I'll show you right here, the average ring size is size 7, which is 17.3 millimeters. So yeah, mine is like a long ways off. So that's why I need to take care of that right now. So going back in there, here is my ring layer right there, going back in to my object, and I could scale this down just like that, scaling it down, scaling it down, you can see those numbers change, and I can try to hit, you know, 17 possibly, or you can just punch it in right over here, 17.3, which is, again, just a much more exact way of doing it. Now, I'm punching in those numbers, but technically it is going to be a little larger than that. So you actually have to determine that size uh, rather than the size of the object. I need to determine this, the inner size of that, uh, of that ring. But nonetheless, I'm just going to leave it at that. In fact, I'll just bump it up to 18, and we can work on the actual size later. But it's definitely really small, right? And that's typically where I want to move it to the ground, and I want to zoom in on it. Well since it's so tough to see, I can select current view, and using my move tool, I can start to move this. So I'm just going to move this up so it's centered, and basically zoom in on this very small object now. Selecting this last option, which is to zoom the 3D camera, and typically what I want to do is uh, I want to create an object that's roughly the size of a finger. So that's when I'll often do a right click and I'll add a cylinder that's 17.3 uh, millimeters in size. Okay, so that's one way to sort of get a simulation of a finger for this 3D object, which is exactly what's going on here. If I turn on this ring extruded, but here's the simulation of a finger size uh, for size 7, and then I've extruded that object. Okay. You're probably wondering how I got that unique shape. Well, it's all a matter of jumping in for that ring and manipulating its taper. It's getting smaller from large to small, so I can taper it down to a point if I want to. And then it's this horizontal angle. So I'm actually wrapping it around that finger just like that. And then I can take that and have it printed. But going back to my version that I've been working on, which is this one here, and it is a different color, doesn't matter, that's going to come from the uh, printer. I want to jump in and I want to do something similar. In fact, I'm just going to twist this. So just grabbing this twist and I can twist that object around just like that. Okay, So I have that twist in place and then this third option right here, I want to adjust the cap, otherwise known as the bevel. So I want to change the front and back because I don't like how it's flat on either side. It might kind of dig into your finger. Nonetheless, we want to adjust that bevel. 
So that's what I'm doing. Sure, I can make it sharp. Again, I don't want it to cut my finger. Let's smooth that out just like that. And now we have that nice smooth face on both the front and back. So this is what I want for a ring. I encourage you to play with all the different features that you have under Deform. Uh, but really at this point, I want to print it out. Now typically what you would do is uh, you'd maybe rotate this up 90 degrees and move it to the ground so it's sitting flat on that surface. So you could print it out with your own 3D printer. Chances are you might not have one, that's fine because that's why we have Shapeways in Sculptio. So selecting Scene, check this out. Second option right here, 3D Print Settings. There we have it, selecting Shapeways or Sculptio and at this point, selecting the material that I want to pick. So I can jump in and I can pick a gold-plated brass if I wanted to. Ceramic, 14 karat gold, you get the idea. Silver, all that fun stuff. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select a detailed plastic. The reason I'm doing this is because I want my model to have a lot of detail, okay? So have all the information there and then I can always change the material later on. But if you pick a ceramic or a sandstone, you're not gonna have a lot of detail in case you wanna change it back to plastic. Detail level, high, right down here, clicking print. All right, here's the ring. You can see it has these different colored stripes. And if you look down here, it just shows you the original mesh and then where the walls were thickened. So where it was really thin right here, it had to thicken those walls. Nonetheless, Photoshop did that for me, so it will be a successful print. And from there, I can see roughly the price for whatever material I have selected. But I can click Export and export that out. From there, it's just a matter of uploading to Shapeways in this case. All right, you can see here's the final model. You can see the material volume in the machine space. That's gonna determine the price. And as you can see right down here, you're given the price right here. So you can see the plastics, get into the detailed stainless steel as well, into the precious metals as well. So really, it's just a matter of picking what you wanna go with. If you wanna go with the steel, just adding it to the cart, printing it out, and then it will be sent to your house to go ahead and wear or give to that loved one.